Hello dear students, welcome to the lecture 13 of Introduction to Programming C Sharp course. Uh, so today I will show you how to uh, design a simple uh, calculator with a .NET VPF app. Uh, this is .NET Core as you already know. Uh, so I will come. I will uh, compose a new application today instead of com uh, continuing from our uh, previous application. Okay, let's uh, pick our folder as usual and lecture thirteen. All right. Okay, uh, the application is being initialized right now, the project. Okay, it's ready. Uh, so I will make an make a simple example of a uh, calculator, and you will do a better one in your project, of course. So a calculator would have uh, buttons to write text and then uh, a screen to show the result. So let's uh, first let's start. Uh, uh, generating our uh, input box to generate input I will use a text box and it will be a big one like this okay and then uh, I will have uh, buttons to uh, write text and it will also accept uh, my input from uh, the keyboard as well so uh, i will generate buttons but this will be uh, simple and quick ones uh, i expect from you to do a better design and uh, coding so let's call this as uh, btn1 okay let's i'm naming it, it as one and name is btn1 and uh, I will, uh, you can use grid system to make them uh, position it better, but I will be just doing copy and pasting right now. BTN2, two, two. I am adding numbers right now. Okay. Okay, I need to copy like this. Okay. So you see, when you open a calculator of Windows, uh, it is designed like this. It has an input here and buttons here and here history and memory okay so you can also copy its design but you may try to make it better looking okay btm4 the design is totally up to us the windows calculator is uh, designed to be uh, taking lesser space and being smaller our application can be bigger so let's add five btm5 and let's copy and paste entire buttons like this okay this will be six this could be generated uh, dynamically but in this case we don't need dynamic uh, button composition because we will have fixed uh, number of buttons nine and i will add zero here okay then uh, what other buttons we will have by the way you are not supposed to make your design like me 
Okay, I am. I will show you the functionality and how to do it. But your design will be unique to you. A better design I am expecting from you. Okay, BTN plus. This will be plus sign. You see, it doesn't allow plus here. Therefore, I am naming it like this. And BTN substract. Substract was written like this or okay it is like this sorry sometimes i am getting problems with typing okay it will be like this and there will be equal okay and we will have parentheses Okay, and around right like this. Okay, and what else? Uh, we can have clear, of course. Let's copy and paste this button as well. So this will be. Um, clear okay and we will also need delete character and clear entire history so uh, let's make this as a delete character so to make delete character we can use this um, Let's name it as the let character um, icon, perhaps. Yeah. And maybe it is available on Wikipedia. Oh, here. I think I can copy and paste this. Yeah, working. Okay, BTN, uh, delete and let's make this as btn clear maybe it is available as well clear character okay you see there are unique codes and i just need to find something that is being displayed on my uh, windows or none of them Let's say um, clear history character or let's say clear history unique code maybe like this okay oh symbol yeah I mean we can search as a symbol as well okay there are some sim some symbols here and. Okay. Symbol for clear, perhaps. Hmm. Okay, none of them looks like the yeah, this is also not a character it is the like big c okay let's use the same no don't waste time so this will be clear this will clear the text box okay and what else we need and we need calculate button uh, which is i think equal to this one so uh, I will get that equal button to here and let's change its position to somewhere here and I will make it bigger like this okay okay so this will be by 
design. The design is totally up to you. I am expecting a good design from you though. So your design should be a good one. Okay, now I can compose for each button a unique click. However, uh, for uh, numbers, I will compose a single click only. And I will show you how to do it. Okay, so let's start with the uh, first one and then we apply the same logic to all of them. Okay, VTM one click. So let's give a name to our text box. You see it has wrap, text wrapping. And first let's run the application to see how it looks. You see you should always... Um, uh, continue as you code. Okay. Okay, the interface is like this, and okay, enter button is not working as expected. And when we hit the enter, it will run the equal. Okay, and yeah. Oh, we forgot this uh, divide and uh, multiply. Okay, so I will make the text box uh, font size a little bit bigger. Font size equal to 16, maybe line height or padding. Yeah, it has padding. Let's make it 3. And let's add divide and multiply buttons. Okay, this will be VTN uh, multiply. Okay, and then i will make uh, divide divide okay all right so this one two three four five six seven eight nine ten zero plus uh, subtract multiply and divide will just add a letter a character to our text box string okay and by default this will be empty of of course or we can put a placeholder it doesn't uh, support placeholder by default let's see If there is a uh, standard solution for this, so I'm checking that. And okay, looks like a placeholder text box, but if this is a default value, yeah, maybe. Let's try. says it is not found any solutions no let's try from code behind okay so let's give a name to our test box user input and txt user input dot placeholder text equal to something let's see if it works okay and no this is weird why so it has properties okay let's try from properties properties or okay it is not available Text what place on the text? Maybe it is at no. Okay, I have shown how to make a placeholder uh, with another solution in the previous lectures. 
And I won't be showing it again. But you can add a placeholder. Placeholder means that when you run the application, it will tell you that enter your input here. And when you click, it will go away. If you watch the previous lectures, you will uh, learn it. Okay. And okay, let's start with uh, button one click. So what will this will do is it will make uh, equal to one simply. So it will just add a one to the uh, uh, our uh, input text box. Let's run the application and test it. Okay, it is working as expected. So instead of coding this for every button here, what I'm going to do is pretty cool. You will see that um, text adding uh, button click. One moment. Okay, and it has you see sender. And what we are going to do is uh, we will uh, add, uh, we will convert sender to a button and we will get uh, its value text. Okay, so how can we do that? Let's make it like this. So this is button my button equal to like this. Okay. And my button dot. Okay, you see there is context. I think context is the its text. Yeah, to sitting. Okay, and I will make uh, this the uh, click event of each button. Like this. Let's run the application. Test it. Okay. All right. One moment. Yeah, it is working. Okay, nice. So what we are going to do is we will add this click event to every button. Okay. It is just uh, simple. Okay, okay. We could add this dynamically, but let's just go with this way for now. It is sufficient. So this will be a button uh, for... Uh, this will be a, uh, the click event for each button that adds a character to the uh, screen. So I am not going to make it for equal because equal is a special button, not just adding character. And here this one as well. Delete and clear are also special. Multiply same, divide same. And we need also space. And to illustrate space, what can we use? I think we can uh, add a space, something like, let's say, okay, normally there is no space character, but we can make it like, how can we show it? I am thinking about that. Okay, let's copy and paste this. And maybe we can find a symbol for that. Symbol. Okay. Maybe there's a good space symbol that can um, represent a blank, uh, blank space. Hmm. Let's see how does this look. It is just empty. Yeah. Yeah, let's make let's add it like this. We can space and we can use the same click event for that one as well. Normally there is no space, but we will support space character as well in our application, so it will have a better uh, visual appearance 
Okay, let's try 2 uh, plus 4 and multiply with 8 and add space and subtract and write open some parentheses. Okay. Okay, is this a valid? Yes, this is a valid uh, mathematical operation. Okay, so, so far it is working as expected. And you see when I change it, its size, uh, it is getting broken like this. And if I were using grid, it would work fine. And if you use grid, it is better. So you should use a grid uh, positioning in your final semester project. I will just make this a little bit bigger and I will have to I will be have to reposition these buttons. Okay, it's fine for now. Okay, so let's also code our um, special buttons. There will be a delete. Let's code it. So this will have a special click event. What this is going to do is uh, it will delete the last character of the uh, text box. Okay. So let's uh, get the text of the text box into a string. Or even we can make it something like this. We don't even need that. If takes the text length bigger than zero, you have to make sure that it is something written. And if it is empty, you shouldn't do anything. So the application wouldn't crash and text equal to text substring. So there is substring method which uh, takes as an input the start index and the length. Start index will be zero and the length will be the text length minus one. Okay, or minus two, I'm not sure. Let's try the first case. I think minus one. So top string takes the starting index and the length of the string, then it takes that many characters and returns back it. Okay, so um, let me show you. So, okay, it's working. One, two, three, four, five. When I click this, it will take its length. It is five. It will start from index zero and it will take four characters. Therefore, it will return back the first four characters of the text. So it is working. Okay. You can uh, debug at home and try it. Okay, it is working. Okay, let's try from. Okay, when I use my keyboard right now, it is not working. Do you know why? Because text box is not focused right now. So what I need to do is, after the um, application is initialized, I will make it focus. And after each character, each letter hit, uh, I will also make it focus like this, like this. So let's try it right now. So the focus is same as clicking. Uh, that object with your mouse. Okay, you see now it's it is focused. Therefore, I see that my uh, cursor is blinking. Okay, so I can type from my keyboard, and I can type from my uh, delete. However, you see when I hit this button, the cursor get back to the uh, to the end of the uh, or beginning of the text box which is not uh, which is something that i don't want and uh, therefore when we use the focus we need to get uh, the end of the text okay so uh, c sharp uh, text box focus ending end of text okay this is what we need so Okay, it is like this. So for focusing, we will use this in the delete and uh, user input. Okay, so you see I did copy paste, which is not something that we want ever in programming. To prevent 
uh, copy paste of my code what i'm going to do is i will write a simple um, method here okay it will be a private uh, void uh, method and i will um, take my code into that method and i will make it like this so let's try again okay okay it starts as focused okay works okay the cursor is gone yeah this is not the code that we want okay okay there is another uh, solution like this let's try this you see this time i just need to change inside of my method so if this method were getting called where were getting accessed from 100 different places i don't need to change any of them this is a uh, method oriented object oriented programming and this is what i am expecting from every one of you this is the best practice of uh, programming okay you need to use uh, methods and never use duplicate code in your project all right let's uh, try again so it is focused okay it is focused let's delete yes it is working as expected now let's code our uh, clear button click here and okay so let's compose a click event okay this is this will simply delete the uh, text of the text box and let's call our uh, focus method as well and what else there is and finally only thing left is our equal button okay so uh, let's retest finally for the final time and then we will go with the equal button okay i am i can also use my um keyboard currently the non-valid characters are not uh, prevented and i will leave it to you to prevent uh, user from entering invalid characters okay so i want you to make in your application to prevent invalid characters from user so let's try our clear button okay it is working okay so the last button is left which is um equal so let's code at that as well okay so let's compose a click event okay i will name this as um, okay it can stay like this so what we need to do is we need to convert user input into a mathematical operation and execute it okay so to do this uh, we need a method uh, let's find this from uh, internet I think there was a regex solution or something like that. Also, uh, we need to support this character as well. I have forgotten that and I am expecting you to have this. You see, I am expecting from you to have this one, this one and these other characters as well. Logarithm or this one 
okay but i won't show them right now because we get the idea and uh, you should also need to uh, solve some of the problems i think there was a regex solution regex convert or not regex okay uh, okay i think this is the correct way of searching for it there is data table however i don't remember if data table is able to calculate begins okay there is double evaluate which is good and yeah let's try this let's try this method also i want you to have a different class for this method however for now i will just uh, use as it is so to display results uh, we need to we will use um, a list box on the right side of our application here and let's add a list box okay now it is uh, using whole space of my application therefore i will just uh, define uh, some width or height to him and then i will shape it myself so it can be like this okay let's give it a name name equal to list box results and the result will be so it shows like this in the uh, result panel and i will do that okay so let's first calculate the results uh, result equal to uh, evaluate and it will take text okay however if you use like this uh, you are likely to have um, let's say you are likely to have uh, um, errors also you see this only supports plus subtract uh, multiply divide and square methods it doesn't support um, upper uh, it doesn't support for example like this something like this three and one moment it doesn't support this so your application is also supposed to support this therefore this method is not perfect however um, what can we do i think we can also support it as something like this i will edit and it will be mod pow and you can add other ones as well as logarithm so i will leave it to you okay and Return the specified okay mod pow with uh, values pop okay therefore so it takes double x and i okay something like this okay yeah I think this should work and yeah let's use the same here i'm not sure though to be able to test it let's write a test first okay so i will write a test and it will be something like this two and let's see if it is evaluating it correctly mm. 
Since I didn't add square button and power button, I am doing a manual test. However, in your application, since you will be coding them, you can do a full test yourself. And yeah, it is working fine. Okay, so uh, this evaluate method should also handle errors uh, or our button click should uh, handle errors. So we can make it like something like this. Uh, result equal to first mass or double dot none this means that it is uh, another number so it, it means that it is invalid and in try catch we will evaluate uh, user input and if error happens we will show exception like this and okay you have entered an incorrect mathematical equation uh, here error message and we can add new line and we can show the message of the error okay so something like this and then we will return if not what we are going to do is we will add it to or insert because i want to see it at the top each time therefore i will use items that insert with zero and the insert item will be equal to user input first and then the or let's make it like with a top character separated and let's show it something like this the design is up to you and it will result that let's say and two or or let's make it just to string okay we want to see entirely okay let's run the application and see how it works okay when i hit an enter button right now nothing happens so i have to use like this so you see it is equal to none it doesn't give error but it is not also a valid number not valid operation and let's try something like this okay it is also none why because we didn't use uh, the return value of evaluate okay now we can see it okay you see this is an in invalid let's see okay you have entered an incorrect mathematical equation here error message input string was not in a correct format okay as expected let's delete it and let's add something like this okay so our application our method is not working correctly obviously <sighs> all right therefore um, we need to fix this let's see why it is not working yeah this is not correct answer okay there is another solution uh, it use evaluate of something like this something like regular expression okay it supports mods multiply and subtract it is still not a full answer okay so let's look for this if this if this one supports big numbers it may work for us okay let's see this one and 
okay it will require us to use using system data and expression is this one okay it returns double therefore it should support big numbers as well okay let's try it okay and let's try something like this okay it has returned it's like this it shows as um, um big number notation um, also it doesn't have wrap text so let's look for wrapping text inside list box first how can we do that hmm. okay there doesn't seem to be an easy solution okay there is scroll weaver horizontal scroll bar disabled or there is another thing let's check it out scroll weaver horizontal hmm. let's see if there is such option Scroll into view. No, not this one. Okay, there is this box resources and Maybe this may work. Anyway, you can find it yourself. I will not spend time with that right now um so i check it whether there is easy solution or not horizontal scroll bar This is asked in Visual Basic. Okay, maybe this one. Okay, this may work. Let's try this. This looks like an easy solution. And I will remove it like this. And I will add this box ending. And inside here, I will write like this this box template. Okay, let's test it out. Okay, and something like this. This wasn't big enough. Also, after user entered click, you can clear here. Okay, it's still not working. It's still at horizontal scroll bar. And so let's see if there is some property related to horizontal scroll bar. Hmm. Maybe stretch. Let's try it. Not sure though. Okay, this solution didn't work.
maybe because there is a binding okay i need to remove that binding yeah this is not the way we don't bind uh, it to any item source right now it may be the reason so let's remove the binding here there is text block and let's try it okay let's copy this okay now we, we can't see the item because we didn't bind it this is not also what we want item source we don't need item source anyway uh so let's leave this as a quest to you to solve uh there are some solutions i have seen but they will take time to code so when we set binding here it is expecting from us um, to class items to be added Okay. Yeah. So let's remove this data template. Okay, now it should work as before. Okay, and wow. Okay, here. Or let's solve it as well. I will solve it. Wait. Yeah, let's use this. I think this is a good way. Okay, so the binding will be... Okay, text and binding will be to our 
something like this this time we will say results and okay let's see what is wrong okay here results and let's add our results to something like this here collection results so this is the observable collection uh, which can be used to bind and let's make it like this there is public one and it just gets return and set and here it adds to the polls what we are going to do is we will add our results to here instead of there okay here and we need to add insert yeah it is working let's try it So since the list box is bound to this uh, result list, it should get updated whenever I make a change. Okay, it says value is either too large or too small for type in 32. Hmm. So this method, as you can see, is not supporting bigger numbers. Uh, therefore, this is not a method that we would like to use. It looks like our binding is not bound yet. Okay. There is still something that we need to do about binding. And... How do we do that? There is Okay, there is item source in the XML file and update source trigger. Yeah, we can, I think, set this uh, in here. Let's try it. Okay. List box, list results, item source equal to results. And list box results trigger some trigger but update source trigger okay hmm. and okay so it is expecting a trigger based item from here hmm. You see, sometimes we have to uh, search our solution uh, more. Okay, there's inode for property changes.
Maybe we don't need it. Let's try it like this. No, still not getting updated. Why? Mm. Binding category name and I see because we need to bind it to a class item and our results need to give a class item we try like something like this Yeah, okay, now working. And let's add another one. Okay, it is working. Nice. Now we will make some equation and some bigger equation. Okay, it's still working, but it's still not text wrapping. Mm -hmm. This is annoying actually. Text wrapping is still not working. Okay, let's try that something like this. Yeah, this looks like a valid property, scroll viewer. By the way, you see when we do summarization, uh, our uh, method called works something like this. this is a very big number summarization okay it is also wrapping text however when we do multiplication like this oh it is still working nice but i have seen some errors in the previous try okay you see you have entry okay so it says you have too big uh, integer therefore this method is also uh, not working as we want here this is not working as we want so it is expecting to have an um, integer at some point to fix that we need to find another uh, method okay c sharp convert So what else we need is now finding a better expression evaluation. So there is codex plus. I think yeah, it, there might be a JavaScript solution. Okay, someone has written something like this. Let's check it out. So it supports basic operators. Yeah.
Okay, so and calc can parse any expression. Nice. Yeah, let's try and calc. We can add um, a library to our um, application from NuGet. So I click it, manage NuGet packages, and from here I will install a library. Uh, NuGet packages are great way to install libraries you see i click right click project and manage nuget packages and from here i will just say install and from ncalc uh, there was an example somewhere about here okay here so i will just use this after install it. okay it is installed it. and so what we need is we have the input string and it will be converted to expression which will be which will come from um ncalc okay so we have some error with ncalc it says it is not working why okay It says interesting using ncalc dot let's say ncalc and from n calculation domain dot okay so this class coming from where link your expression okay and calc expression you see i have to provide full name because there are multiple expressions uh, in my current libraries therefore i have to give it full uh, path of the method called i will i want to use the expression method of ncalc therefore i am giving full path and it does evaluate and we will return the results so these results this returns object and we will return uh, convert to double and result so let's see what features does this have okay this has string and such so let's return it like this so if an error happens we will just display it what was the error okay let's make some arbitrary oh so this application supports maximum in six support let's try something okay it is working however it is displaying uh it's like this so to fix that what we are going to do is we will pick n9 let's try like this so you see now it supports uh, double big numbers as well uh, however not bigger than double it's supported okay you see now it is displayed as negative However, this should be a valid positive number. I am not sure why. Okay, it is not even that big. I think it, it, it is float. Or... Plus float. yeah decim yeah we need to use decim not double so this will be decimal and convert to decimal and here okay we will use decimal results and that there is negate it turns not this one hmm. 
Yeah, it looks like there is no uh, no none or equivalent of none in takeable uh, therefore we will do like this and let's show with five precision okay let's try something like this okay to see what's happening in the code behind i will do okay so expression is generated and result is generated okay and it should be able to convert it to oh what is the exception input string i see so it just re returns result in the scientific notation so uh scientific notation to decimal yeah this is what we need how to convert scientific notation to decimal okay so it is like this i think yeah someone has given us the answer so we will have it's like this and return okay so it will be to string okay let's try like this uh, okay we don't want to display a scientific notation therefore we are using some arbitrary okay it's still too weak too weak okay it is working right now okay i think it is displaying a pretty big number so let's try 3.2 multiply 5 yeah working okay so for the rest of the operation okay what we need is uh, when we click the enter we want um, this button to be clicked therefore um, Let's capture it. Click. Let's find a easy solution. Okay, there is no not be informed. This is VPF. Okay, so what we need to add is we need to add a, a key press or key cap capture event to our um uh, form itself so here our main grid and here i am going to add a, a key down yeah this should work fine and whenever a key down happens on um our grid it will capture it by okay you see it is key event so let's find another solution c sharp vpf key events Okay, let's try something like this okay key and it should be equal to enter and we need numpad enter as well i don't know if it will it will it capture it or not i will try it right now so here it will um, call this button click basically to call it i will provide null and null okay so let's run okay 
Okay. When I hit enter in my numpad working, when I hit enter in my um, main keywords working, one final thing. Uh, after the calculation is done, if it is done, of course, uh, correctly, we need to clear the user input. Okay. So I will call um, clear click here with null and null. You see, you can call this kind of um, buttons with providing a object as an object null and rotate event arcs as a null because they support null. They they are nullable types, nullable nullable classes. Okay, okay, working very fine. Something like this should throw an error. Therefore, I can let user to fix it. Okay, and minus this, this, something like this. Yes, it is working perfectly fine. Okay, rest is totally up to you. And uh, let's take note of what we have seen today. Okay, lecture 13. Okay, um... topics okay so what we have seen um, are uh, let's see let's start from how to convert sender to a button and read button content uh, how to use single event to capture multiple button clicks and process them. Okay, and single click event. Okay, uh, how to design and code a calculator with uh, .NET Core, .NET uh, C Sharp, PPF. Okay. Code program. And how to focus elements, how to delete last character text box focus elements text box okay and how to um, convert exp string expression expression of a user into a mathematical equation and obtain results in decimal form by using let's say ancalc okay and what else okay how to use you see this is observable collection uh, which can bind to um, any item source and when it's updated the interface also get updated so let's read some official definition from uh, of the, uh, MSTN to get more idea. WPF observable collection. An observable collection is a dynamic collection of objects of a given type. Objects can be added, removed or be updated with an automatic notification of actions. When an object is added to or removed from an observable collection, the UI is automatically updated. This happens because, when binding to an observable collection, WPF automatically adds a collection changed event handler to the observable collection's events. Okay, so we now, you now get the idea of observable collection. It can be used for any user interface things. 
okay what is on and how to use to update to automatically user interface ui elements such as list box okay and okay this is the static evaluate function okay how to how to capture key events on a vpf application to execute or let's say yeah execute different methods for different keys you see basically here i can capture any key and execute different um events for them for example i can prevent uh, invalid characters to be written to my uh, text box such as let's say if it is equal to key dot um, for example let's see let's find some invalid character okay Okay, for example, what is the equivalent of dollar character? I wonder that. What are these D1, D2, D3, D1? Let's find the key code. Okay. So dollars is 52 yeah let's find it equal to 52 i think this should work as well hmm no it didn't work why key event equal hmm, key but 52 okay we will find the 52 which is a Let's find this from, from internet key items. Okay, here the field. Okay, now we can find. Okay, so it is D4. So something like this. But I see different here. Interesting. No, not this one. Where is the dollar key? Oh, it is not. Okay, let's look something like this. Okay, there is character feature as well. So let's check that. How do we check it? The key. There is key character. Hmm. Okay, it is in green form.
so it is done like this. Okay, let's try something like this then. So for double, uh, we use three on the key list. Yeah, T3 and okay, that's all right out. Okay, so it will just return uh it will just uh, make the event invalid or how can we do that mm, we can make it something like this perhaps how can we make it So the key dub event will be executed um, after the yeah I think event default Okay, it is something like this. Let's try it. So I will put a breakpoint here to test my um, idea. Okay, when I click 3, it will tell me that yes, D3 click it. Okay, it is fine. And when I try and double click, yeah, it is being harder right now it is working so it is not working okay right alt and hmm, d3 okay it is not working like this Let's see if we can capture it. First, we need to make sure that we are able to capture it. Oh, by the way, it is alt 4, not 3. So, yeah, we are able to capture it. Okay. So, it is 4 and e dot handle it equal to true. So, let's try again. Okay, now I am not able to put dollar character. However, of course, this is not the appropriate way. You should have another um, method and each time the text box is updated, you need to check whether uh, an invalid character is written or not. By invalid, I mean that you should have a white list of characters, something like this. White listed characters and it will be something like this you should you will allow only certain characters to be entered like this and this and this and etc and if other than these 
letters are entered to the text box, you will remove them. Okay. So this is not the correct way because with this way you cannot block every possible combination of characters. However, if you use a white list of characters, uh, you can prevent invalid characters to be uh, to be entered. Use a white list of characters to be entered into the text box to prevent a user from entering invalid characters. Okay. So whenever the text of the text box changes, you need to check each character and uh, see if there is a string or, or, or character uh, that exists in the text box text, remove it. Okay, so I will leave it to you as well. I won't show it right now. It is simple, you can do it, but I want you to do it. Um, okay, and what else it is we have? Okay, I think we have shown everything, and let's upload our source code to our repository okay Okay, end of lecture. Hopefully, see you next week.